Ah, howdy everybody. Excuse me, let me take this fine cigar out of my mouth while I talk to you for a minute here. This is the Game Colonel, and I'm coming to you today because I want to talk about something I really want to focus on the new player. You just get this new game, Elite Dangerous. You downloaded it. And depending on the speed of your internet, could have taken some time. But you're finally here ready to play. The screen comes up. You click start. You click, eh, solo or open play. Doesn't matter. I want to jump in. You want to jump in, start playing. Everybody does. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is, the frustration level early on in this game rises really quick. Why? Because you keep getting blown out of space. You keep crashing into different things. You dock with uh, what you think is a friendly starport, only to find out that you haven't landed fast enough, and they, again, shoot you out of space. Well, today, I really want to pass on the Colonel's top 10 mistakes new players make, and some tips and tricks of kind of how to get around those. Now face it, every game, especially more complex ones, and, and ones like Elite Dangerous that I refer more to as a simulator, a space simulator, can be pretty frustrating. There's a learning curve involved with that, but it also should be fun while you're doing it. So I'm going to go through a whole series of different items, 10 of them, that I think would, you know, would have helped me right from the start, and hopefully will help some of you new players uh, go through this here and lower the uh, frustration level. So the first one I want to do is, you know, I see on the forums, the the, the uh, Elite Dangerous forums when you're going through, that um, people are, are writing in, asking questions of, you know, this first time back in the game, I played for a little bit, but I got so frustrated, I threw down the controller and I walked away. Or, what do I do here? I keep getting killed. And, you know, real basic questions that, hey, they're not basic when you're a new player, but I see a lot of those. Well, if you'd start with this very first screen under the training heading right here that I'm showing you, and it's got areas of training missions, training videos, and certain challenges. You know, pretty much every question I've seen thrown out within uh, the Frontier forums and throughout different YouTube channels can all be answered probably 80 to 90 percent um, of the way through this first area. Now this area has grown and gotten more detailed over the past several years. So right now, really worth taking a look at. When you hit training missions, it's going to take you through from your basic flight training to mining, advanced combat training, ship launch fighter training when you start upgrading to larger ships that have fighters, uh, fighter docking capability. Next, it's got a ton of videos for you to go through, all the way through here. And again, please supplement this with YouTube. I'm not going to give you any specific channels. But if you just type in Elite Dangerous, Elite Dangerous Horizons, you name it, it's out there. Also, the Colonel's Channels is out there, too. Go through these videos, okay? Finally, you think you're ready to do some bit more flying, but you don't want to risk your expensive uh, new, quote, Sidewinder? Well, here, here's a few ones for you to try. Let's try out those weapons you just got installed in there. Let's do a Supply Strike, an Incursion, all right? So these areas are here for you to to dabble with, to try, and hopefully will reduce your frustration level. So, you know, really the first mistake I see people all the time is they jump in the game, they're excited. Nothing wrong with that. Just take a deep breath after you've been knocked about a little bit, come back to this training section, and go forward from there. All right, everybody. The next big mistake I want to talk about here is fuel management. I mean, come on. Really proud of Fuel Rats for 20,000 rescues. But that's got to tell you something. It's got to tell you that folks are not planning and going out there and running out of gas a lot more than they should. Now, again, great service the fuel ads provide. And I'll actually put a link down below and, and how you can contact them if you need a rescue. But let's go over how not to get in that situation. You got an aircraft or a spaceship. You got a plan to fly and fly that plan. Now, I know it sounds corny. Being a pilot for quite a few years, there is no excuse of running out of fuel. And if you're treating this kind of like a simulator, yes, it's a game and going out there having fun, you need to plan through and make sure that you have enough fuel for your out and back leg or at least until the next station, okay? There's so many resources within this mapping screen that I'm showing you right here that you should never ever run out of fuel, okay? So let's start right from the beginning. 
you need, like I said, plan your route. So I'd put a simple route here from my home station at uh, from Ohm uh, system at Wolf 406. I just threw it out there some distance. If you're a new player, you know, you want to go as far as you can and see what's out there, and I encourage you to do so. But be aware of a few things. When your line switches from solid to dash, you're dead in the water, okay? You're out of fuel or you're out of useful fuel to be able to do another jump uh, at your standard distance. You may have, a, well, you will have enough to survive for a little bit, but again, there's also instances where people go right down and they've got limited fuel left and fuel rats have got a lot of stories and rescues in that area too. So be aware, don't plan your next scoop or re your refuel at the beginning of that dotted line. If you're doing that, you stretched it too far, you're out of time, okay? So the next thing is, is have a, f a fuel scoop on board. If you're doing localized flying in the area, you have a combat ship, you don't need to have a fuel scoop on board. You want to focus your weight and your power resources towards your weapons. However, if you're doing long distance or, hey, you know, you just want to have a fuel scoop, put one on. But use it every time. So every stop you do, and my next topic here, we'll talk about how you select the stars. But when you get to a star, scoop every time. Whether or not you're a quarter tank down, a half tank, scoop every single time. You never know when you're going to be up against a, a a brown star or a white dwarf where you can't do any scooping and then a couple of jumps after that you're you're again you're plum dry as they say okay if you find yourself getting very low and you've gotten yourself in a sea of non scoopable stars switch over to the economical route okay if you look on the left hand side different types of routes economical fastest and of course FSD boost if you have uh, the materials with you but we're gonna talk about the fastest route first. This is what I have logged into my, it always goes to default fastest route. Okay, I could take that off and if I'm in trouble, let's say right around here, I could put economical route, it'll redraw it, adding a number, a number of different stops in there in addition that maybe you can get to a star where you can scoop or it's gonna provide you to a station. But again, flight planning effectively you won't run you won't run into a situation like this but again that's there to help you and again at any point switch right back to fastest route and just as a quick note when you do that sometimes as you can see it's drawing all these uh, different routes and uh, FSD jump rate ranges uh, this can tie, uh, tie up a lot of your RAM okay so just click that off It'll stay there at the fastest route, just won't do all this background work that your computer is having to take care of while you're trying to play the game. Okay, next, you find yourself in trouble, take a step back. If you know there was a station that you just passed, but you're in a hurry, best thing to do is go back to that previous star, get out to the station, and get a refuel if you don't have a scoop. And last but not least, call the fuel rats. They're there to help you. They're a great professional bunch of folks. Go on their website, and there'll be a link of it below. Get into there. It's real simple. Log into it. You'll communicate with them. Tell them where you're at. Just remember, you're not going to be able to be into a solo game. You've got to be in um, a private group, whether it's Mobius, or you've got to be in open play for them to be able to help you. Common sense. Okay? So the second uh, one we talked about for common mistakes, fuel management. All right. The next big mistake a lot of new players do is they don't understand and learn this map. This map will keep you safe wherever you go. And it'll always let you pick your destination from a lot of specific categories. And I was no different when I started off. I just pointed in that direction, clicked a few stars, and off I went. Well, here's what we need to do. We talked earlier about uh, not running out of fuel, foot stomping that one again. This will guarantee that every stop you make is through a scoopable star system. How do you do that? Well, what you do is you're in the realistic map right now, shows every single star. Beautiful, but not a lot, not very helpful. Go into the map view, sort it by star class. All your scoopable stars, let me unclick these here, are the ones we're talking about here now. Is your Alpha, Bravo, Foxtrot, Oscar, Golf, Kilo, and Mike stars. The rest are not scoopable. How do you remember that? All right, the saying pretty much goes, always be fueling or gonna kill myself. I know it's pretty basic, 
but that'll keep you safe if you highlight all of these and don't forget to highlight apply filter to route if you don't click that you're not going to go to every scoopable star in your route click this it'll ensure that your route no matter how you want to change it will stay within those stars okay a little caveat to this you are in the or right now we're currently in the main uh, galaxial plane here with the most of the stars when you start venturing out to the top or bottom of the disk of the galaxy there's a lot fewer stars okay you may always put scoopable stars but there may not be the right distances between to always stop at each of those stars and it's going to show on your computer you can't navigate that direction so you have to little, do a little finessing with it but again that only happens when you go above and below the main plane of the galaxy some other things to be aware of on the map here again is you can organize it by state states that are in retreat war lockdown civil unrest uh, unrest these come into great importance when you're trying to increase or do a type of a mission okay if you want to do some combat missions look for um, areas in war or civil unrest there'll be a lot more at, at that area if you want to look at um, stars certain security they have within their areas high medium low lawless anarchy okay anarchy is a great system that if you want to do some raiding on ships and not be chased after by the local federales an anarchy system lawless system is the one to go to okay. so <clears throat> have a look through all these also if you want to identify certain locations and stars by their population size you can hit that by population and set it by min and max okay or you can do it as of none and none shows everything there now if you're into trading you could uh, look at the trading routes you see them starting to appear here from this one star location it's because I'm selecting what are the trading routes from the location that I'm at and it'll tell you here utilizing this function along with some other additional website will help you make the maximum amount of money per each trade okay be aware of all the options that are in here uh, as you explore through Elite Dangerous uh, don't make the mistake I made of just jumping in there and going. This will help keep you out of trouble. Just a few things on top. If you find some systems that are very helpful to you, as you see this one here, has a bookmark into it. Just when you hit the star, it will give the option here to bookmark it. Once you bookmark it, you can go up here, right click on it, and rename it anything you want. Okay. Finally, um, yes, you've got power play. If you're utilizing that system, it gives you a good view of what the actual bubble is the habited space and then finally if you want to go into let me get rid of that that's not working for me and then last but not least you want to identify certain important areas for again example bookmarks you can hide all of yours you can show them all the background nebula regions constellations remember this this last tab is over here this will help you keep uh, uh, abreast of where your items that are important to you are located within the game especially engineers you don't have to hunt and pack for where the engineers are. One click will show you where everything's at. So again, one of the top mistakes, I think, for new players, not understanding this map and what this map brings to you. All right? All right, let's look now. You've got a few credits in your pocket. You want to pimp your ride. Well, this is the first ship you're going to start with, and why not? Let's put some bigger weapons on that. I remember doing this. I was excited. I had some money. Let's put some power into this and let's start, you know, collecting some bounties. Well, you got to be careful. You're up against limitations of what your engines and your core internal power sources can provide, especially your power plant, okay? So what you need to do with first, uh, with this, let me go back, is to make sure that the weapons you want will work within the power that your... Uh, engine is able to provide for that okay if you look down at the bottom of the screen here it tells me the max amount in my total power available is 9.60 with everything retracted we're talking weapons we're talking chaff flare whatever these everything else retracted sensors I'm gonna expend continuously 7.56 megawatts with it deployed meaning when I start to switch on these weapons 
I already, I spike way above it to 10.11 megawatts. That'll put my ship dead in the water, so to speak. Okay, there are some things you can do for that, but let's take a look first at uh, what this is actually like and what you're going to experience out there, because guaranteed it's going to happen to you, and you're going to say, what in the heck has happened to my aircraft, my ship, excuse me. <laughs> All right, so we're out away from the station a little bit here. Um, let's see what happens here. We have to draw on the weapons, so I've gotten the, the weapons selected here. I switch it. There we go. Dead in the water. Oxygen will deplete in five minutes out of power okay that's all you're able to do here okay because what it does if you look at your number four screen or your screen on the right hand side it prioritized it for me it says you're way over budget power so it will look at my priority listing on the far right you see some I have many I have in priority one <coughs> it will keep those going others like the cargo hatch I put to priority four life support priority four so it shut down what it could to give me enough power to utilize the weapons, okay? So to make this work now, what I need to do is I need to... I'm going to just deactivate this railgun, okay? It brought back up my cargo hatch. It brought back up my oxygen. When you find yourself in a situation like this, the quickest fix is to get you going, and you're not a dead duck, is to just get rid of the main item that caused that issue, okay? Now, for later, again, I have way too much power on here. It, it, it's hard to regulate this much power, but it can be done. Go through each one here and find out which is your priorities. So if you really want this railgun up there, keep it at one. Change your beam. Oh, excuse me. Hold on a second. Okay. So like I said, the fix is pretty easy on this. Again, if you have some time, you still want to use the weapons. My railgun is the most important, so I'm going to keep that as... I'm going to activate that. There goes my power there. It went off again. But if I go down to the beam laser, I don't need that as much. So I'm going to change the priority. Okay, I moved that to priority 5. See what it did? It started my engine. Put that now, the first to shut off is the beam laser, and allows me now to continue firing okay simple as that power management but don't get yourself in the situation once you depart the station this is completely workable with a little bit of power with a little bit of planning within the station so again let me head back so bottom line work your power uh, requirements before you depart the station. All right, let's take a quick look at another area that I see a lot of new folks messing up. Uh, it's how to enter and exit a starport. Seems pretty simple. There's a hole. If you look up on the top here where the ship came in, there's a hole up there coming in and out. However, if you don't do it right, you're going to have a, a pretty bad accident. It's not going to happen every time. There's going to be a time when there's a large ship coming through and you're going to get a bit squashed. The rule of thumb is always exit at the green light and enter at the green light. There's a perfect example. If you went on the red side, it would have uh, thumped your craft a little bit here. Oops, sorry. Now, don't let people tell you it's just like you're sailing on a boat because, you know, when you enter a harbor, you enter on the red side. So, uh, red right enter. Okay? that it's different always exit and enter on the green simple as that okay next I want to talk about buying a new ship a lot of new folks finally get some money uh, set up and that's great that's what it's about they want to upgrade in their ship what they don't realize is after you spend the money for a ship for example here's an ASP Explorer its basic cost is 6.6 .6 million credits. Okay, that's its basic cost if you're not going to do any upgrading with it. And as everybody knows, you got to upgrade these things here or they're pretty pathetic. Okay, but anyway, so let's start with the Asp Explorer. You're doing the upgrade. You have to be aware of the buyback cost because plan on losing it. Plan on someone shooting it out of the out of the sky 
and you're going to have to do the buyback cost. What is the buyback cost? Well, that all varies. What I like to do is take a look at a website, and I talked about it in my other video, the ED Shipyard website. You see the link up above there. I'll also put it again into the description. You buy an ASP Explorer, the basic loadout price here with what's on it, 6.6. .6, okay? Um, when you're putting this thing together, or any other ship, you're going to want to see what are the possibilities and what are the costs for this. So again, I'm not going to mess with anything on the left-hand side here, but example, here's a Python for 81 uh, million here, and this is with some additions that I've done on it. The buyback insurance is 4 million, okay? That's what it costs to get the ship back as it was. Every time you do a change to it, you upgrade the thrusters, you upgrade the power plant, your insurance buyback cost is also going to increase, okay? Make sure you have enough to at least do two buybacks uh, for a safe margin if you're going to upgrade a ship. So don't look at it as like, oh, I just made it to $81 million or $82 million. I'm going to buy a Python. No, it's not time to buy one yet. Get up a bit higher or go for a, a smaller ship. Simple as that. Plan for your ship's destruction and plan for the buyback cost. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how not to get a sunburn. By that I mean being able to dissipate the heat on your ship when you get too close to a, stu uh, a sun or a star. It's going to happen, okay? Especially when you're new to it and you're saying, well, i got to get close to the star to be able to scoop. A couple things come into play. What's the distance around the star? How long do you have to stay around the star until you overheat? And then again, what do you do with the heating? Yep, make sure every one of your ships has a heat sink in it. There's even going to be times when you're jumping from system to system and it puts you right past one star into a double star system and you're too close to the other star and you immediately start to overheat. you got to react to that or you're going to lose your ship. Okay. So first let's talk about um, fuel scooping. The correct and easy way to do it, foolproof, every time. If you go into your screen in 4, okay, on the far right side, I go to functions. If I look all the way down, right here orbit lines a lot of people don't like to use them and if you're going to take photos or videos of the game on the outside yeah it tends to clutter it up a little bit but this is an invaluable tool to gauge distance from each of the objects and also gives you uh, a sense of what direction you're approaching an item from uh, whether it be a station or another planet so i like to keep these on at all times unless i'm doing a uh, a photo shoot or taking a couple neat pictures of some some great locations I found okay so that being said let's jump here to this star and we're gonna do a scoop and because I'm doing this I didn't check ahead but I believe oops I forgot to look at what type of star it was it says it usually in the upper right but we'll do it anyway what I want to do is as soon as I approach the star I'm going to scooch in a little bit and then I'm going to drop down to three quarter power, which is F3 on my screen here. And like I normally do with any aircraft, I do not like to push over into negative G's, even though they don't exist in this game. I'm going to rotate over and come up underneath the star. Okay, I'm going to turn this way. I'm at three now. And if you look at the top of my screen here, Okay, I've slowed down the speed. I just keep it right about there. I can increase the speed. And I can even increase it further. All I do is ride that line and keep it right within there. I haven't maxed out my fueling capability, but it keeps me safely away from the sun. Okay, and I can continue like this till my temperature rises a bit. Rule of thumb is I try to not let it go over 80%. <coughs> you have a bit more leeway up into 100 but I don't like to get that far up into it so I continue to ride the sun all the way through and again I'm at maximum speed for the star as I cruise around if I keep it right centered where we're at I should have my target coming around and I'll be full here in a minute with fuel scooping there we go if I want I can just release and get some distance away from that and cool down the ship and I come just back around and there it is. On a smaller star, you're going to find yourself having to pull back a lot further because the circumference is a lot less. 
at that point, go ahead and slow down to, let's say, F3 uh, on your keyboard, about three-quarter power, and then press on. So again, no overheating issues. Was able to scoop right away and take care of that. If you find yourself, you got too far, too close to the sun, it's going to drop you right out of um, your warp speed, uh, your frame shift drive speed, and you're going to be stuck there too close and immediately s signs of overheating. Turn and start impulse pushing away and then drop a heat sink to get that temperature down. You should find itself pretty good as cooled off by at that point. The problem you're going to have is when you get ready to boost back in to uh, a frame shift drive, it's going to rapidly overheat. Wait until just before it engages to that and drop another heat sink and you'll be fine. Okay, next I want to cover planetary or station approach on the surface, okay? Like me, as soon as uh, Elite Dangerous Horizons came out, I had to get on the surface of a planet and a moon to see what it was about. Okay, there's a couple things you need to do, and again, it all starts with planning. So we take a look at this, we go to the map screen. As you can tell, I'm already uh, identified to head out towards Wolf 4063D, specifically Harper's Depot. Okay, now if I look at this planet here highlighted, I can look at the specifics here and I know, and this is something you should do before you land, what is the gravity of this planet? So okay, so it's 0 0.05 G, not much at all, not a concern. The thing you don't want to find out is when it's too late and you're doing an approach into a, a station or a planet surface that the gravity is, you know, one, two, three, four Gs or more. Your ship will handle drastically different under those G circumstances and conditions than it will under a planet such as this. So now going in, there's nothing unique I have to do differently. But if it was a higher G, uh, my uh, approach would be a lot less steep. Okay. So now that with that being identified, I've got it marked on my reticule here for Harper Depot. I'm waiting till my countdown gets to uh, the standard about six and seven until I throttle it back. There we go. Now the only thing I don't know is is on what side of the planet uh, the station is located at. So I'll just keep watching where uh, my reticule goes and see how I'm going to have to approach this. The goal is to get as close to the station before you drop out of uh, glide as possible. That way you're well within the distance of being able to request landing if you choose and to be able to uh, get within the safety confines of a planet if you're being chased uh, or with the station if you're being chased. So here we go. I see it on the opposite side of the planet. It's drifting. So I'm coming in. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Okay, it's right there. Again, I have a tendency to always Pull positive G's, so you'll see me flipping around like that. Okay, it's just on the other side of the planet. And there we go. It looks like it's right on the divide between night and day. I'm going to start drifting in now. If you ever find yourself coming in there too fast, just throttle it back and do uh, uh, a loop should slow you right back down and get on your glide path again. So, the darker side here should lighten up for you a bit. I know it looks a little uh, uneasy going into a dark area like this, but it should be no problem. Slowing it down. And I'm going in at about a 45 degree angle to the, de to the depot. Hopefully this lightens up and here we go. See a lot of steep canyons all about. Like I said, that's what's uh, great about landing on planets. Each one is a little bit different. Okay. If you look on there, I'm just about ready to hit my drop. At that case, I will cut off power in a minute. Power's off. There we go. As you can see now, the reading on the lower right is 0.05G, so it's fine there. 
All right, we've entered the glide. I'm going to keep it posted right there until it passes under the nose of my ship. Okay, about a 15 degree in. You will not hit the planet, and I just nose it right at the end. I actually could have gotten a little closer, but you get the idea. Nose it right in there, not too shallow, or it'll drop out, kind of like it did with me. And get yourself in there, so we're good there. Now, if I wanted to land, I could go ahead and land here. I'd call for a standard landing, and just uh, enter to the pad at which you're directed. Okay. I think what we'll next go down into is, so let's get in the SRV and look at a couple of the wave signatures. And some of the handling characteristics of the SRV. Okay, we're now on the surface in the SRV. I'm just after my ship, just by a couple meters. If I'm looking straight ahead, that wave scan is telling me the metallic object that showed up in this circle of interest when I was passing over is directly ahead of me. Probably about a, a kilometer or so out. Okay, those signals will start to get closer as you get into that, okay? I recommend, so you can make heads or tails of this, think of it as just like an aircraft radar different signals bounce back with different strengths. But to know which symbols equate to which, you need to go to a site called wavescanner.net. That site will allow you to click on each of the certain types of minerals out there and tell you what the bounce back receiver is going to look like. Okay. Okay, now you see wavescanner.net. It's a pretty useful website in teaching you how your wave scanner on the SRV operates and what it looks like from different objects that you may face with, be faced with on the surface of any planet or moon. So let's take a look at kind of what we showed uh, in the SRV just recently. Is a guarded cache. So yes, the signal on the SRV that uh, we're going through right now is uh, on in my game is not as compacted. This is when the signal is fairly close to you. The object is fairly close to you. However, you will see it uh, transition to a more um, focused image like you have on the screen of a guarded cache. Now, if you're looking for materials, like I said, on the surface of the planet and they're rare materials, you're going to want to look for a metallic meteorite. This is what it looks like. There's a number of different bars that you count from the bottom to the top. So right here, we have the first, missing the second, but show the third that shows it's a metallic meteorite. Whenever you see that signal, that's what you're going to have in front of you. And that's what I'd recommend looking for when you're looking for your rare materials. Just for other areas, you have outcrops, outcrop one and two. There's an example of that. Take rid of one down there. Got it. And then it's all the different materials. So I'd recommend just going through this, familiarizing yourself with what uh, each of the screens can show, and it will just help you not make the mistake of running all over this planet or any planet that you're at looking for items and getting frustrated because you just can't quite find it and you keep coming up with materials that you don't need. Okay? There you have it. Okay, finally, have you ever found yourself in this situation? You got a target you're going to head out to. You're going to deliver some supplies. You planned your route. Right, looks good to go. You hit getting ready to jump. Frame shift canceled. Jump exceeded drive fuel. It's very frustrating. It's happened a lot of times until I figured out what happened. Issue is, is you did your flight planning and your route distances based on an empty cargo. You did it before you filled up your ship full of cargo. Wait until after you fill up your ship full of cargo, then flight plan it, meaning getting your stops, and then press on. It's not a problem. How do you fix it? Quickly, getting out to the map screen, as soon as I hit it, Bam, it switches right over there to a different location. Now, I hit go, I'm ready to go. It adjusts for the amount of cargo on board the ship. Remember, because your jump range dis distance will change. Well, everybody, I hope you got something out of this video. If you just got a little bit of uh, an idea or something new to try, or it opened your eyes to trying this game one more time because you were so frustrated at the initial part of jumping in, I understand and I hope it helps in some way. Like I said, love this simulation. I think it's fantastic. It's got a lot of promise and it's already got so many 
options and possibilities that exist in it right now I encourage you to jump in give it another try but most of all just have fun this has been the game kernel and I'm in command